Hi, welcome to the North Phoenix Suburban Stead. My name is Rich. In this video, it's going to be instructional on how to remove and reinstall a carburetor on a dirt bike. This is a 2005 Honda CRF 250X. Now there's plenty of content available on YouTube and forums and documents to give you the guidance on how to do this, but there are things they don't tell you, especially in the videos. If you watch some of those, you'll see that they skip over the reinstallation part. Why? Because it's wicked cumbersome, because it is a struggle to go ahead and do that. So this video, we're going to start doing things or taking things apart to get to the carburetor with the reinstallation in mind. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy this video. Before we get started, let's just chat about a couple of quick things here. I've done this once before and I got really frustrated because of the things that they didn't tell you. So that's what this video is about. But so this is what we're after. Whether you are rebuilding the carburetor or replacing the jets or just cleaning or even replacing the whole system, it's not that easy to get it out and get it back in. These are the topics of the video that we're going to be addressing about the things they don't tell you. First is preparation and then positioning the bike on the stand, top stuff like the seat, the battery, the gas tank, removing the subframe, addressing the rear shock, the throttle, the hot start, and the electronics, and then reinstalling in the reverse process. But before we get started, make sure you're prepared. I am going to spill stuff. I've got coolant, uh, maybe some brake fluid, definitely some gasoline uh, to this carburetor uh, in and out of the dirt bike. So help yourself, get prepared. You'll see this is not a pristine garage with everything all clean and all the tools. You're gonna see me get frustrated, you're gonna hear me cursing, but ultimately I've learned get prepared because you're going to make a mess. Let's get started. In preparation, help yourself. Make sure you've got some good lighting, you've got your tools all prepared, you've got receptacles to catch any of the fluids that drain out. I'm gonna lay down this towel here because I'm just trying to do my best to stop making a mess on the floor. Plenty of times, plenty, plenty of times I've dripped all types of stuff on this floor, including brake fluid, which is the worst. So help yourself. Get your shit set up. So there's the carburetor, pretty well engineered. It's inside there and it's difficult to get to the pieces while it's installed. If you see the, see the shock absorber there, so here's something they don't tell you and it's probably a duh type of moment, but get it on the stand in a good position, making sure it's stable, but you can also bring it up and down. I'll explain as I go through it. But the key here is that you may desire to take the shock absorber all the way off and you'll need access to that lower bolt to get to the shock absorber. So, something they don't tell you, put it on the stand where it's gonna be able to be stable and you'll have access to the bottom bolt of the shock absorber. Let's do a quick walk around. As I mentioned, this is a 2005 Honda CRF 250X. And inside here in the frame is the carburetor. It's pretty well in there. It's difficult to get the bolts and screws, so I'm gonna take it out for whatever reason you're taking it out. I rebuilt the entire carburetor, and today I need to fix a couple other components, and I need to remove it. So what you'll see here is I've got a gas tank, I've got a seat, I've got a subframe, and of course it's kinda of hard to see in there, but there's the shock absorber is gonna be in the way to be able to pull it out. 
Now I want you to take note of the muffler and also this has uh, the coolant tank is attached to the subframe. So that'll you'll see why that, that comes into play here. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the seat. This happens to have a battery, we'll remove that. Then we'll remove the gas tank and then we'll have full access to the subframe to take that off as well. The seat on the CRF250X has a bolt up here that it clips into and then it's got two uh, 10 millimeter bolts or eight mils, but 10 millimeter socket on both sides. So let's remove the seat. Now remove the battery. Negative side first. Now we'll remove the gas tank. Before you do this, of course, make sure that the fuel is shut off. I'm gonna pull the fuel line off of the carburetor fuel inlet. Actually, that's what I'm gonna need to fix today. Uh, but that's for another video. Uh, so fuel off, line's gonna come off the fuel inlet. And then there's uh, some clips up here on the, um, on the gas tank. Also, when you remove this, once you've got it all disconnected, we're going to take off, we're going to unhook the cock from the, um, uh, from the frame or from the connection. And when I pull it out, be really careful with this piece. You don't want to bang it on all of those things in there and potentially damage it. So have a receptacle ready. You're going to drip some fuel, even though you've got it turned off. I've got a couple of rags here too. What I'm just trying to do is just remove it, uh, remove the area of it just making a complete mess. So here we go. Just a quick note here. So this is the fuel inlet and mine's, mine's busted in there. So I can't get a screwdriver on the set screw, uh, which by the way is all aluminum. So uh, the reason I say that is because you don't want to strip that. So I cannot get a screwdriver in to get that set screw out to replace this. Uh, so I'm, that's why I'm taking this whole thing uh, apart or taking the carburetor out is so I can get to it. Couple other things I'll be changing here is the off idle. Uh, I dropped the spring last time I did it, couldn't find it, put it back together without it. I wanna put the spring in. And also you'll see these drip lines. There are four of them on this particular carburetor 
and this bike does come when the carburetor it comes with um, I forget what you call them but they're brackets that attach to the screws that hold on the um, the uh, uh, what forget what you call this thing where it has the float inside the float bowl and it has these clips that, that go in there and hold these stables so they're not always flopping around I want to put those in as well that again is going to be for another video but just to give you an idea of why I'm doing this is so I can get easier access to it now if you listen to <clears throat> man that's hard to get off if you listen to some of these videos or if you read some of the forums, they tell you how easy it is. Oh, do this, do that. Remember, they're professionally trained. They've probably done it a dozen times, whatever, right? But I get really, really frustrated about the things they don't tell you about when they're uh, dismantling it. And then they skip over the things that are a struggle bus for them. All right, so I'm going to shut up and get this thing off now. And there's the dripping I was talking about. So you're gonna drip, be prepared. Okay, now we're going to remove this bolt so I can remove the on-off switch from the, uh, from the frame and be able to pull the gas tank off. You can take off this hose if you want to. Uh, I'm gonna try to do it without it. This is an eight millimeter. something they don't tell you. Um, I try to do my best to hold on to the parts, but things like this, I'm just putting the bolt back in there so I don't lose it. Uh, and I know that's part of it. All right, at this point, we should be ready to go to be able to lift this thing off. Spoke too soon. One more bolt, that's at the top here. The previous owner put in an, uh, a different type of bolt up here than what typically comes uh, standard or stock with this bike. Uh, but no worries, it's the right size, it's just with an Allen wrench uh, to go ahead and pull it out. And again, be careful here, right? Don't drop, don't drop the, uh, don't drop the bolt. All right, good there. careful when you pull that out. With the gas tank off, let's get a view of what we're looking at here before we take more things off. So let me get a better light here. So here's the whole carburetor assembly is down here. There are four drip lines that come off of the carburetor. There is a, a, in this particular bike, there is electronics or uh, electrical wires that kind of get, uh, that are in the way here. There's also an air relief um, tube right here. So we want to be careful. Also, oh yeah, doy, right? Throttle control. So these two cables, and you'll see we're going to get in there, but first I'm just going to uh, move some things around, especially uh, the air relief and then we will begin to take off the subframe. One other quick note. This is the top of, top of the shock absorber. It's right here. So in few videos, people tell you you don't have to take the shock out, you can lift this. I think that's BS. Uh, other ones tell you to take the shock absorber all the way off, and I don't think we need to do that. But I am definitely going to remove the shock absorber from the top of here so I can push the uh, the shock absorber back and provide better access once I've got the subframe off. To remove the subframe, there are two bolts, one on each side <clears throat> down here, and there's one long bolt going through here on this particular bike. So again, the things they don't tell you. Keep in mind here that you're gonna have to reinstall. 
So yes, we are gonna disconnect the air intake boot from the carburetor and there's a screw up here for the bracket. Uh, screw up there uh, from the uh, on the bracket. It's hard to see right now. We will undo that as well. But before we get started, this is the things they don't tell you. Keep in mind, you have to reinstall this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is remove the reserve tank for the coolant. This particular bike, it's hooked up on the back on the subframe with two bolts. I got a line uh, that is coming in for overflow and I've got a, an excess drip line here as well. I'm gonna take both of those off and be careful here because you don't wanna get coolant fluid all over the place. After we remove the reserve tank on the coolant, we're going to re remove the muffler. There is a bolt up here and a bolt down here and it's just a slide in connection uh, down there. But you'll see that when, if you watch videos, you watch these uh, mechanics or these trained mechanics who have done this before, where they take the whole subframe off and then they flip it over and they hold it on to the side. Well, I got all types of tubes here. We got electronic lines for the brakes. We got battery hookup, we got the muffler, we've got the reserve tank, we've got all of those things. So keeping in mind that you're gonna have to reinstall this, so we're gonna remove that tank and we're gonna remove the muffler, then we will go ahead and undo the, um, the uh, air, uh, air bladder or whatever you call this thing that's connected to the carb and then we'll be able to go ahead and easily move it. When we reinstall it, this way we won't drip the coolant and the muffler won't create struggle bus when we go to reconnect the boot. When you're disconnecting the reserve tank uh, for the coolant, make sure you have a receptacle here to catch anything you're gonna drip. You're definitely gonna drip. Just try to limit it the best you can. Also, I've got these uh, quarter inch drip irrigation goof plugs, and hopefully I'm gonna try to put these into the tube so uh, I can leave them connected, um, either connected to the subframe, or if I do probably pull these out of the fender where the fender holds it, um, I just don't want those to drip either. All right, let's see if these things work. Yeah, all right. Awesome. You know what, I'm gonna take these off first. That'll give me a little bit less drip.
Okay, now we're gonna remove the muffler. Remember, the reason that we're doing this is because the reinstallation process gets really cumbersome. So it's just easier if I take the muffler off now and I reinstall it after I put the subframe back, it just makes it so much easier, especially when you're looking to connect the air intake boot to the carburetor. So I have an eight millimeter bolt on this one and I've got a, uh, well, this is a 12, 12 millimeter socket uh, on this one. And you'll see how easy this will come off. Now, I don't know if it'll be the same on your bike, but on this Honda 250, CRF 250X 2005 model, it's pretty straightforward. It just plugs right into uh, to the exhaust. And there it is, right? So pretty straightforward. This just plugs right in. There's no clamp on it or anything like that. You'll see me now, I'm gonna put these bolts back into these pieces here. This is just so I don't lose them. And I know which ones go where. Well, that one's gonna go into the muffler itself. All right, all good. You start to see that there's room moving up here. I took the tank off on this side, the reserve coolant tank, took the muffler off. The next is the air intake boot, which is way back down over here. I got to get a screwdriver in there to take off the clamp. Once, I'm, once I've taken that off or at least have loosened it, then we'll take the whole subframe off and we will turn it and we'll hold it. But again, I want to make sure that we're sharing with you the things I don't tell you. Think about when you reinstall. That's when it becomes valuable to take these things off because reinstalling is not that easy. In fact, watch the videos. You'll see them skip over a lot of the reinstallation components because they're probably cursing a lot or they're struggling or banging things because all of this stuff gets in the way. So here's another thing they don't tell you. What you're looking at here is the master cylinder for the rear brake. This particular bike has this piece on top with some electronics. You'll see it's actually cut there. That connects to this, um, to the banjo nut or whatever you call this thing. And that's where there is brake fluid and certainly that there is pressure. So when I originally took this off, and I flipped over the subframe, I totally ripped out the connection, you'll see right there, to the top of that. Now what that does is when you depress the brake, so when you, when you depress the rear brake, it senses that you are hitting the brake and it sends the electronic signal up through the line. Okay, all right. So it sends it through the line up to the brake light in the back. So I've got mine disconnected because I'm not, what I'm not gonna do is I'm not right now, I'm not gonna replace this or try to fix it because if I do that, it's going to take pressure off the line, uh, the brake line, and I really just don't feel like going through that process and pressurizing and changing washers and all that stuff. So for right now, I'm just gonna keep this thing disconnected. But if on your bike, if you have this, you need to be very, very careful that when you take the subframe off and you flip it over to get access to the shock absorber and to the carburetor, you want to make sure you don't freaking rip the, uh, rip the line. You just want to be careful. In this case, I ripped it. I'm keeping it off right now. I'll replace it at a later date.
before I, so I took the two bolts out on the subframe on the lower side, on, on that side of the bike and on this side. Those are two of the three. This is the third one, and this is the long one that connects to the top of the frame here. Before I take this off, however, I'm going to loosen the bracket of the air intake to the carburetor. I want that bracket nice and loose and I want the, the bladder to slide right off. So these two bolts first on the subframe, then we're going to loosen up the bracket here for the bladder or the, the air bladder going into the carburetor. Then we'll take this off and we'll flip the whole thing over. All right, we need to loosen the bracket of the air intake connects to the carburetor. And it's hard to see here, even on the camera, of where that screw is. All right, we're ready to take the, we're ready to loosen the bracket of the air intake into the carburetor. And what you're looking at here is a close up view. I've got a light shining on the screw for the bracket that we need to release. It's hard to get to. I use a really, really long screwdriver to get inside there. So I'm gonna film this but it's gonna be a little bit cumbersome to do that, so bear with me. All right, I'm on the screw. Now, I'm not gonna take this uh, screw all the way out, but I am gonna loosen it a fair amount. It just makes it easier to move the bracket and uh, be able to unhook the air intake. All right, so here we go. I just loosened the uh, clamp that goes around the air intake because once I take this bolt out, I'm going to remove the subframe and I want that air intake to come off the carburetor really, really smooth or really simple. Uh, the reason I say that is because you want to try to avoid any type of dirt or dust or or grime or anything getting inside uh, the carburetor. It just makes it for a hassle later. So here we go. See that? Just kidding. Let's get a better view here. So watch as I take this thing off that you'll see it's gonna it's gonna want to stick it's got the boot is still connected so I'm kind of wiggling a little bit and there it is it popped right off. So got some other uh, connections here right some other tubes electrical tubes. Um, they are definitely tubes um, for the for the uh, overflow tank or the uh, reserve tank of the coolant. So you'll see how I'm just moving it. By the way, I, what I didn't show you is that I've got this connection. Uh, this is an air, air it's an air relief uh, from the, um, the bladder and it connects right there. I don't know if you can see that, um, but I got it coming off pretty easily. And so here it is. We've got access now to the carburetor. Let me put a flashlight on that so you can see it. Now the carburetor is still connected with the throttle uh, and a couple of other pieces. So what I can show you here, if you see that, I've got the throttle when it's fully wide open, it's completely open. Looks like there's a little bit of dust around here. I wanna definitely try to remove that. So that's what we're getting after. Now you'll see it is offset a little bit to the left, but I've got the shock absorber is still in the way here. So I'm gonna rework this and reposition uh, this so I've access to this bolt and be able to just to pull the shock absorber back and I'll talk about more things they don't share with you uh, when you do that process. So here we go. I wanted to give you a better view here of what we're looking at. So I have these uh, tubes. These are for coolant. This is for an air relief valve. And I'm trying to get to this bolt so I can undo the shock absorber and move it back. 
So here's the carburetor. You'll see it's offset on this bike a little bit to the left. I did watch some videos where they talked about how you can get it out of there, but take a look at that. It's freaking crazy. By the way, the throttle is still connected, so I do have to disconnect that. But the point is that I'm moving this shock absorber out of the way to get better access to removing the carb. This top connection for the shock absorber is a 17 millimeter bolt. Pretty cool design too. It, uh, the bolt, let's see if I can get it out. You see there, the bolt has a specific flange to it to get it out. So uh, something to note here, and the, I do see videos talking about this. They talk about picking up the back tire and because you've got the swing arm here and just making it a little bit easier to go ahead and take the bolts out. Don't know if you can see that over my shoulder. Let me see if I can get that from the other angle. So here I'm holding up the back wheel on the swing arm and just pulling that bolt out. And there's a shock absorber. So as I drop the wheel, the shock absorber is going to come down. And at this point, I should be able to slide it back. So you'll see there that it gave me a few inches. And it's not a huge amount, but it is enough that I can get in access to the carburetor a little bit easier. Again, in some, uh, they talk about taking the shock absorber all the way off. You can do that. Uh, I'm not going to do that uh, because I think I can go ahead and get to it. Just keep these tubes out of the way. I've repositioned the subframe so I can give you a better view on one of the next things that we need to do. What you see there, if I can get the camera on it, there it is. See that, that's a black uh, cover right there, black plastic cover, and that goes over the throttle controls connected to the carburetor. We need, there's a one bolt up there that we need to take, uh, take off, and then we'll be able to get to the cables and unhook them from the carburetor. That's the next thing we're gonna do. Then after that, we're going to loosen up this bolt right here, which is the bracket for the uh, boot connecting the carburetor to the actual engine. And uh, there might be a few other little things uh, that will reposition and move out of the way. Here we go. All right, so this is hard to see. And I also, my camera doesn't zoom, which uh, I need to replace. But what I'm trying to share with you is I'm looking from a top-down view toward the back of the bike at the top of the carburetor. And these that I'm pointing to, um, those are the throttle connections. So right next to that, there is a bolt right in there with an Allen wrench. And I actually have uh, modified this Allen wrench so I can fit it in there and take that bolt out. So I need to take that bolt out so I can remove this cap and then remove the throttle cables. That's the next thing we're doing. I'm going to try to get a better camera angle on this so you can see how I'm doing it. Uh, be patient with it. Um, it's not that simple. Uh, there's a lot of components in there, but we need to reduce, we need to get the throttles out, throttle cables. So I should mention here that to be able to get in there, and again, it's really hard to see, I've got some of these um, tubes that are in the way. This one in particular here is an air relief, and that tube comes in through this part of the frame, and then it actually gets in the way of me being able to get an Allen wrench in there. So I'm going to disconnect those tubes just to get them out of the way. Without, uh, with that out of the way, should be able to get access to this piece. 
I've got a light shining from the back. Uh, I don't know if you can see the bolt, but my hand's probably going to get in the way here because I got to get this Allen wrench uh, in there to be able to take this off. I am curious, I'm wondering if I could take the throttle cables off the throttle at the top of the handlebars and just feed them through. But, shit, I got the wrong size Allen wrench. Be patient. I think I'm going to have to get to it from underneath. This is what I mean by the struggle bus part of this stuff. It's so tightly engineered in there. All right, so I finally got it in there. Uh, with my left hand, I moved these tubes out of the way so I can get better leverage coming in from behind. Now I need to crack it. And that was enough that I can now uh, loosen it with my fingers and put the light back on it. Yeah, totally be prepared for the struggle on this. Got it. There it is. All right, so now with that off, I can loosen the throttle cables here. And that's because it's got these special clamps on it, uh, specifically designed that holds uh, everything together, including that plastic cap. And they go on a very specific way. Uh, I don't think it's something that you can do without. So let's see if I've got this here. Oh, there's another. Sorry about that. There's another Allen wrench here. Looks like it's the same size number four uh, for this black cap connected to the carburetor. Yep. So again, the stuff that they don't tell you uh, in the videos. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of little pieces in here and they may talk about it but they don't show it to you they don't walk you through it and if you haven't done this before if you haven't been professionally trained it's just going to be a struggle so here it is this is the second time i'm doing this and it's still a freaking struggle maybe if i had the shock absorber out of the way i could have removed some more of the air relief uh, air relief tubes i don't think it's necessary all right, I got it. There it is. Now this cap should come right off, and it does. So here's the cap. One was there, and one was in there. All right, now I got access to the throttle cables. So let me get a good closer look. So here's a closer look at these clips that I was talking about. You can kind of spin it a little bit there. But you can see it's got a special, it's got a lip to one end and it goes on to these brackets. But you'll see I've now taken the cap off and I can um, get the throttle cables out of those holes. And then we're going to go in this way and we will detach them. Maybe that's a better view. No, nope, can't get in there. All right, so here we are, um, a, a close-up view of the throttle cable connections to the carburetor. You'll see one of them, the one on the top, has a blue mark on it. That's got the letter T for knowing that that's the top. I did that last time that, uh, that I took this apart. So the things they don't tell you, 
is that somehow mark one from the other so you know which one's on top which one goes on the bottom or which one uh, opens the valve which one um, closes either way mark them so when you put them back together it'll be uh, helpful to, to do it so let me reposition the camera and you'll see me take these off hoping you can see this okay this is the shock absorber is kind of in the way of the focus of the camera but what we're going after here are the cables attached there you'll see here's the throttle opening uh, or the air intake opening to the carburetor and when I turn the throttle you'll see one of them uh, opens it and the other is a spring back to closing it so I'm gonna turn it a little bit and then work my way to take that top one off and then we'll take the bottom one off so not the best camera angle but we'll show you here that this is the top throttle and you see that where I just put a screwdriver under the cable and I unhooked it so now I want to be able to get to the other one all right hopefully you can see this so I've got the top cable off and you'll see that one is marked with a T there's a blue sharpie and marked it with a T this one down below it you'll see that with the cable here I can move this screwdriver bring the cable off the pulley system and up and turn it in that groove and pull the pin out and pull the pin out there we go all right got them throttle is disconnected what's going on there okay next we are moving on to the hot start so just above the choke uh, valve here you'll see this black tube coming in that connects to the carburetor that is the hot start and that is a plastic connection really difficult to get to so there was one video in particular that i watched that talked about how to be really careful but what they do and as i move the camera you'll see the cable comes up uh, through the front steering column and then over to the hot start lever or decompression whatever you call it what i'm going to do here is actually disconnect the cable from the decompression and feed it through because i just don't want to mess with that plastic connection to the carburetor so that's how we're going to do this part nice so again right the rookie in me what i was able to do was pull this connection out this way and be able to easily take that cable out and what the good news there is i didn't have to mangle the cable with the pliers so now that i've deconnected the disconnected the cable bring it back through this boot and we'll feed it back through down to the carburetor and keep it connected to the carb So again, the objective there, and they do tell you this stuff, is that I'm just trying to avoid putting any stress on that plastic uh, connection to the carburetor for the hot start. All right, next here is to get the boot and take the boot off that goes from the carburetor into the engine. All right, so what are we looking at here? This is in uh, to be able to turn the idler this is the fuel inlet this is what i need to be able to get to see that it's leaking oil and i need to replace that leaking fuel rather this is the choke valve right here open and close and this is just a little bracket that holds the fuel line to the frame that goes from the tank into the uh into the carburetor it's this screw we're going after you'll see it's attached to the bracket and it's a relatively small boot that goes from the carburetor into the engine I want you to take note on this. Again, they don't tell you this until they reinstall, actually. You'll see there's a groove there, meaning there's two rubber pieces, and this one even isn't seated, it's not seated perfectly, but that is from the carburetor, and that should be right in between there. So I'm gonna get a screwdriver down in here, and we're gonna loosen this bracket. And just like the other one, 
My objective here is to loosen it as much as I can, but I don't want to take the bolt out or the screw out rather. And not that they talk about this, but it's one of those things that if you did happen to take the screw all the way out, it's a bitch to get it back in. So here you'll see it's loose. Now the clamp um, moves freely and we'll be able to pull this carburetor out. Again, there may be other connections here that I forgot about. Uh, also something to be aware of is that I will be pulling through the hot, uh, the hot start cable will come through. I've got four drain lines that are connected to the carburetor as well. But I think we're ready to pull it out now. So let's, uh, let's give this a go. So I totally feel like I'm forgetting something, but uh, so here's the carb that I want to be able to take out and take it right out of this area. And I can move the carb freely where it's connected to the boot, but struggling a little bit to get it detached uh, appropriately. Now there is another, there is another band. I'm wondering if I can take off here we go. That seems to spinning and pulling and just working it to get it off. Everything is disconnected. <clears throat> and there we go. Popped it off. Just want to be careful with it. I don't want to loosen anything, bang anything, break anything. Really don't spend, feel like spending more time or money. Oh, and be careful here. Things they don't tell you. This will drip, right? As I twist and turn this, there is fuel inside the carburetor, especially down at the bowl. And it will, if I don't pull it out correctly, it'll drip right out those four, uh, well, at least a couple of the drip lines. I really feel like I'm forgetting something. You know, and it might be this clip on the electronics. Yeah. So I can see it here. Let me get a let me get a view for you. Ha! I knew I was forgetting something. So that's the electronics here that are connected. This is a T25 connector here. There's a clip back here that's on a number three Allen wrench. But if you follow the wire up on the electronics, let me get there with the camera, that's the connector right there. So we're going to, there's a, this type of uh, connector, there's just stick a screwdriver in there and you bend down the tab and it pops right out. So let me get a position on the camera and we'll disconnect that. All right, so here's the connector. That's the electronics from the carburetor uh, to give it power and whatever else it does, it sensors and stuff. And the way you remove this, this is called a tang. And you slip the screwdriver under this and kind of disconnect it and you should be able to pop right out. There we go. That's it. All right, back to removing the carb. Everything is detached here and I'm, um, I'm confident of it. You'll notice here that I already broke this tube, so we'll be addressing that, but that's another, uh, that'll be a different video. I've got other two tubes here, all the drainage. I disconnected the electronics. I've got the cable here for the hot start and we're just going to be able to pull this, lift this thing up and take the whole unit out. And here it comes. Awesome. This was my, yeah, that's my freaking tube, one of the drainage tubes. And I got it connected right here, even without a clip. All right, so there it is. This face is the back. You got the bowl here on the bottom. This is a piece that I'm going to be replacing. I've got a, a off idle that I forgot to put the spring in. And I've got two clips here that will hold all of this mess uh, and keep it nice and, nice and neat inside all of that. Okay, so that uh, came apart. The flux capacitor is what makes time travel possible.
This video is part two, reinstallation of the carburetor. If you haven't done so already, check out part one, the removal. Note how the removal process was done with the reinstallation in mind. Reinstallation is the reverse order of removal. This is a list of the items from the bottom up. For the reinstallation process, we'll start with electronics, then the hot start, throttle, the rear shock, put the subframe back on, top stuff, which is the seat, the battery, and the gas tank. So let's get rolling. Okay, so we did the repairs that we wanted to um, on the carburetor. That's another video. Now we're gonna put this back in, and yes, it goes in the order, or the backwards order of the way we removed it. Uh, but I'm still gonna walk you through. It'll be a little bit quicker than uh, removal. So first thing, We've got all of these tubes, and now we've got the right um, we've got the right clips here now too. So let's just kind of place these. They're going to go down behind the shock absorber, and this is the hot start cable. We're going to wire that or feed that back through, rather, not wire it. We'll just let that hang as we attach some of the other components first. So you'll see I'm slipping it in there as I'm feeding this through. And the objective here, and again, be careful, things they don't tell you. Right now, I've got the, the rubber boot that attaches the carburetor to the engine is open. It's totally open. Anything drops in there, it's going to be on top of the valves. So you want to be really careful about putting it back in. Make sure you seat it correctly and, and try your best not to let any dust or dirt get in there. So let me get, uh, I'll put the camera on that. Now we've got a closer look at the boot and you'll see that there's these two rubber pieces here. This is completely loose and we want to feed that in there and there's a, a tab on the carburetor that's going to go right between those two. So let me fix this light. Just moving some things out of the way as I go to reseat this. Now, if you saw when we took it out, it took a little bit uh, to pull that out. And so be patient here and should slip in pretty easily. There we go. And we're in and you can feel it. It gets, um, I mean, you can feel it seat and it can't go in any further. All right, so now I wanna be able to get access to that, to that screw so I can tighten the clamp. So something they don't tell you here, it would be really, pretty quick to just put the screwdriver in to go ahead and tighten that clamp right there. But I've got the hot, um, the hot start cable is right there. So I actually want to kind of angle this down a little bit and come in from the side here. Uh, I see I got a, um, I think I have one of those drain tubes. Seems to be not seated correctly. So bear with me. Okay, here we go. Now I've got it where I want it. Remember I made this thing pretty loose, so I'm gonna crank on it, make sure I got a really good snug fit. I can feel that the carb is still in there strong. And she's turning just fine. Ah. 
All right. I don't know if there's a torque spec on that, and I don't even really care. I think it's pretty tight. Carburetor is in there really solid. All right, let's put some other pieces back together. So we'll hook back up the, uh, the power. Uh, notice that these are the throttle cables, and we haven't hooked them back up yet. I actually want this to go under them. And uh, there's enough play in the wire that it can easily go below them, and it won't, in, it won't obstruct them. Pretty simple stuff. I don't know if you can see, I think my hand's in the way. But um, pretty simple, it just clips right in. Just clips right in. <laughs> just clips right in. You'll hear it click. Yeah, that's a better view. All right, so we got the electronics. Now I've got a couple other pieces here. This piece stays out here. This goes, this is, stays above. It's just an open air and it clips onto the, it clips onto the tube uh, for the uh, air relief that goes to the top of the valves. So that's right here. Now that we've clipped in the power, we want to feed, there's a tube, an air relief tube that stays above the carb and it goes through the middle of this piece right here and it attaches, this air relief attaches right to the top of the valve cover. So let's get that seated. There's a clamp. I had to move the camera out of the way so I could get my hands in here and get it uh, seated correctly. So now I've got it around and let me just get it all the way down. And then we'll put the clamp on it. You know what, I'm calling that good enough. Here we go, now here's another air relief and that just clips right on there. I don't know if that's an air relief, I don't know what it is. Clips on. The next piece on the reinstall is, re, uh, is reattaching the throttle cables. Now, if you remember, we marked the throttle cables. We knew which one was on top. So we're going to feed this through to get it placed down, down near here. And we'll do the bottom one first. OK, now we're going to reattach the throttle cables um, to the carburetor. And you'll see there's a clip right here where my fingers that needs to be up when it gets seated into the, into the bracket or the manifold or whatever it's called. But before I do that, I wanna get the cable connected. So remember, this is the bottom one and you'll see I just put it in there. Now I'll just gently pull this and keep it around the pulley. I've got my fingers up here to hold that clip and to make sure that that clip goes on the outside of that uh, manifold or whatever you call it and it seats right in there and you want to make sure that that clip that has the lip is facing the middle of the bike okay so I've got that seated in there maybe that's the pull to open it not the return either way it was the bottom one so now I've got the top one, I put it somewhere, there it is. So hopefully you can see that, let me check really quick. So here's the top one, and I know it's a top because I marked it with a T. So that needs to go along the top of the pulley and be seated with that same type of clip staying on the outside. So I'm not gonna seat it just yet because I wanna be able to get the cable in, get that pin in, it's reversed. So now that I've got it there, let's see if I can pull it. Maybe I should have done the top one first because that's the return. 
I don't know. I pulled it. Oh, it's because I turned it. So let me see if I can turn the throttle and if I can get it in there any easier. Ah, uh, you know what? It's just it was just stuck on the bracket. So let's get that cable off the bracket. So I have more play with the cable to get it into the slot. T on the outside. There she is. Now she's in. And on the pulley. Now I got to move up that clip I've been telling you about. I know you can't see it right now, but it's a pain. And I maybe there's a better way to do this. I don't know. But I never seen any videos of anybody talking through the detail on this. So I really have no idea if it's right. I don't know any ticks or tips or tricks. I'm just telling you from what I got frustrated with last time I did this. I got the clip in my finger. I'm now going to seat the cable in its holder or in the bracket, the manifold. I don't know what you call it. And tighten it up. And I'm going to do this to a hand tight. Actually, I don't want to do that yet. Why? Because I got to put on the plastic freaking shield or whatever that thing is. All right, take a pause here. Okay, more difficult stuff. So this is the plastic cover that goes over the throttle connection. There's these tabs here. It goes on the outside of the bracket or the, I don't know what you call it. Um, and there's clips on the throttle. There's all types of stuff that you got to be conscious of. There's also two, two screws here. If you saw me take it out, the uh, first one, we're going to hand tighten it. And then it's really difficult to get an uh, Allen wrench in there. But when you go for it, of course. And then there's one that goes back here that's pretty accessible. So let's first get this seated with the uh, throttle cable connections and the clips to the manifold. I'm going to, I'm going to switch your angle. All right, this is a little bit hard to see, but it's gonna take uh, some finessing. I'm actually gonna loosen up just a little bit on the throttle cable, and I'm taking the plastic piece and coming in from the back to be able to seat it correctly. As I mentioned, right, there's got, it goes on the outside of the bracket, and the clips uh, go on the outside as well. So this is gonna take a little bit, I'm going to stop talking and just finesse it. I'll probably fast forward this for you. I don't know if I'm exactly doing this correctly, but the I really don't care. As long as I have it seated correctly, which I do, now I'm just tightening back up the throttle cables. This is, this is the bolt really difficult to get in there. I'm going to go with fingers on the both sides to get it started. Um, hopefully I can spin it pretty far and get it connected and then I'll put an Allen wrench to it. And this of course I'm assuming it's all lined up correctly. Yeah you probably can't see it too well even with the even with the better light I put on it because of these tubes that are in the way. But I am I've got it in there I'm cranking it down with my fingers. There we go. Nice. Oh man, it's so nice to get that done. All right, let me show you the other one. All right, so now we've got this bolt and that's gonna go right up in here. You know, I should take my own advice. You probably, if you've listened from the beginning, one of the things I preached about was have better lighting. Yeah. Don't dumbass. I mean, I've got some good lighting here, but not like this flashlight in a good position. So it's just, it's difficult to see on the camera. Uh, again, I don't have zoom on the camera either. That's another video we're going to be talking about upgrading camera equipment for the YouTube videos. Okay. Now we're in. All right. So let's review really quick. So we seated the carburetor back into the boot and we tightened down this clamp. We then connected the electrical 
which is right here, connected that clip, and then we just put the throttle cables together. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna move this really quick and take this another air relief and just take it off the top of the throttle cables. So we've there's the throttle cable connections, and we put the plastic uh, protector or whatever you call it. Uh, this thing uh, back on the throttle pieces. The next thing we're gonna do now is hook back up the hot start. All right, I lied. We're not going to the hot start just yet. First thing I wanna do is verify that I've got the throttle cables connected correctly. So what you're looking at here is the intake of the carburetor. And we're looking for that in the background that when I spin it, it comes up full throttle, lets all that air in, and it drops back down when I release it. It's got nice action, it's simple. That is verified to me that I have tightened the throttle cables correctly um, at the right location. That feels good to me. Okay, now on to the freaking hot start cable. If you watched earlier in the video, when it comes to the hot start, I mentioned that you have a choice. And that choice is that you can disconnect it from the carburetor or you can disconnect it from the hot start lever. I chose the hot start lever and the reason I did that is because I watched enough videos where people cautioned you uh, about that because it's a plastic connection and you can easily strip it or break it and I just don't feel like dealing with that. So I'm actually going to remove this number plate or the light. Nah, I'm not going to remove it. Let me see if I can get this fed up through correctly where I want it to go inside. There's a just a metal piece here that keeps things together up through the steering column. And you'll see them. I just pulled it straight through. So now we've got to take the hot start cable and we want to feed it through the, um, the boot. Then we're going to connect it to the cable and then we will seat, I don't know what you call that thing, the plunge or something, I don't know, whatever it's called. I'm sure there's a word for it. I'm sure mechanics know it. Uh, but again, not a mechanic, just a guy desires to do it on his own. All right, so I'm through the boot. Now I want to pull that cable. To be able to seat that cable in the lever comes up from the bottom. There we go. I'm in there. Now I want to be able to pull it and seat it in its housing there. And that's it. Feels good. Pull the boot back over. All right, hot start reconnected. So we're ready to reattach the shock absorber uh, to the frame. A couple things to note and things they don't tell you. This is an air, uh, air relief valve that connects up to the bladder for the air intake. You want to make sure that that is on uh, this side. It just gets a little bit cumbersome to try to feed it back through. It can be done, uh, but it gets cumbersome. What you'll also notice is that there's going to be a little bit of a twist to the shock absorber. So I have a helper here who's gonna help me to get it aligned by lifting up the back tire. And so the swing arm uh, will come up and then it's just gonna be some brute force and maybe some hammering, I uh, don't know, to get this realigned back in here so I can get the bolt in correctly. Oh yeah, it goes one way in this particular bike. So like that, all right, here we go. So a little bit lower, now a little bit higher. Right about there, hold on. Kind of go up and down a little bit. Got more down, there we go. So I got it through. So if you have a helper, um, that would be nice. What I have done in the past too, when I've done this before, is I actually put a jack uh, under the back tire and a uh, auto jack and was able to just go ahead and, and use that a little bit to lift it up and get it into a better uh, position uh, to be seated. So that's it. Uh, let me crank it down. 
I'm sure there's a Torx spec on this. Uh, I don't know what it is. I'm just going to go click. And that's pretty tight. So I think we're good there. All right, now this is going to come um, uh, the hard part. And that is we're going to put the subframe back on. Now the most important piece here is to make sure that we've got the uh, air bladder connected to the carburetor intake uh, correctly. That's going to be the key piece. Now remember the things they don't tell you. We took off the muffler, which is you'll see right here. We took that off so we don't have to deal with trying to get that correct while we're getting that correct. We want to focus on this, make sure we have it seated correctly. Uh, I'm going to show you some other things too that are a little bit of a challenge, but let's go ahead and get this thing into position. Then I'll move the camera to show you how the uh, boot gets seated. Okay, now I did see some videos where they talked about some tricks about um, getting some of the pieces or I think even putting a bolt or two in on the subframe before you seat everything. Uh, I'm not going to do that here. I don't believe I am. Meaning, I'm just going to look to uh, make sure we've got this close. I really want to focus on that uh, seating of the boot first. Then I'll worry about the screws or the bolts rather. All right, this is gonna be really hard to see, but it's being seated up in here and I just don't have a good camera angle uh, on this. Actually, let me even try to move it, see if we can get you something better. It's up in here. So I've got these two drainage tubes that I just put the clip on and I uh, replace this um, I replaced the throttle, the, uh, the fuel inlet. Uh, so I'm gonna feed these cables a little bit, or not the cables, but the drainage tubes a little bit out of, see if I can get it a little bit out of the way so it's not inhibiting us. And you can see hopefully inside here. Now on the boot, there is this rubber tab. I'm kind of flicking it with my finger right now. It's a little bit hard to see. That tab is designed for you to be able to pull the, um, uh, pull the the air, uh, the air boot uh, over the intake uh, of that. But it's it's really not that simple. And it's not only is it not that simple, mine actually has a little crack in it. So it's not a crack that it's impacting the actual boot itself, but it is nonetheless. It it's a crack, so I'm a little bit precarious with it because I don't want it to. I don't want it to. Um, I don't want it to rip any further. So I think you know what I'm going to do here is I am going to put in one bolt uh, on the subframe. I'm going to do that on the other side, uh, so I can hold the subframe up better. Otherwise, it just falls back down. So just one bolt on the right side here, and we'll just get that seated a little bit. Okay. So you know we may do another one too. We'll see how this goes. So hopefully you can see, I am on it. I'm on the, uh, the carburetor piece. I'm gonna see if I can get the tab to do this correctly. You know what, I think I'm gonna put in the other bolts here in the bottom of the subframe. Now I'm doing the lower left side on the subframe. So that'll give me an up and down motion, but not a left to right as I continue to try to see this. So, let me, uh, I'm gonna take a pause here. Okay, repositioned the camera, uh, made a few just slight adjustments here to get into position. So I've got the flashlight on here and it's hard to see, but that is the, the clamp on the end of the boot that's going around the carburetor. You'll see right here that I've got these two are about an inch and a half, maybe two inches away. I'll be lifting it up and down as I continue to finesse to get that um, boot seated correctly. So 
Uh, I imagine, actually I'll talk about this as I go through it. I imagine that one of the, this is one of the bigger challenges and why when you watch all those other videos and the things that they don't tell you is because this is not an easy job. Getting this thing in and getting it seated correctly is not that simple. I imagine if you've got a lot of experience uh, and you've done it before, it'd be great. I don't. Uh, I know what needs to happen, but how I'm going to get there is another story. You know what? I'm going to ask for a helper again. Hang on. So those who are still watching right now, this is this where struggle comes in. Looks really good on this side. Now let me just verify the other side and we'll put a bolt, bolt in. Everything looks lined up pretty good. Oh yeah, she's in there nicely. So we're not gonna put the bolts back in to the subframe. All right, we're reattaching the subframe now. So I've got the bolt in on that side. I'm gonna get the bolt in here, and I'm gonna ask you just to, a little bit up to the right, just like that, no, too much, right there. A little bit more. Okay. We got that seated correctly. Now we'll take the bolt, the third one, and it goes in at the top, get that seated. Look at us as if we know what we're doing. All right, you're all good. I'm gonna tighten them down now. Click. Okay, if you remember when we were putting the top of the shock absorber back on, there was this air uh, tube that I said you wanted to feed under where the shock absorber connects before you do it It's just that it's it's just difficult and cumbersome to get it back through if it was on the other side But this is an air relief valve or air relief connection. I don't know what you call it and I've got it here just um, Connecting it right to the air bladder Back on the shot of the carburetor here, and this is the piece that I just replaced uh, so I'm going to pull these tubes now back down. I want to get them out of the way. Um, these are the drainage tubes. And we'll seat those correctly here. Okay. All that looks good. We're ready to put the gas, gas can back on. So let me get that. So as I do this, a friendly reminder that you've got this piece here that's connected to the gas tank. And you wanna be really careful of all of this as you seat it back through. You wanna make sure you don't bang it, you wanna don't hit anything. Just nice and easy, slip it in there. There's really only one position this can go in. Pull the fuel line. Should have fed that through first. But the fuel line's gonna be looking like it's pretty good. All right, so it's seated well. Now let's reattach the, I don't know what you call it, the, the shutoff uh, the shut valve here. If you remember, I put this bolt in to keep it in place. This goes on the outside and clips in here. Okay, so let me move the camera. So this is the piece that I replaced. That's the fuel inlet valve. And I'm just gonna connect it all back up. I'll turn it on and test it for leaks as well. 
a little bit of a different style here, but nonetheless works perfect. A struggle bus again with these freaking clips. There we go. All right, I'm good with that. And that clip just holds it. So here we go. I'm going to turn the. Oh, you can't see it's in up here. I'll turn this on check for leaks. Uh, it looks pretty good. Sweet. Let me turn it back off for now just so we can uh, finish this up. Then we'll fire it up, of course. So we're going to hook up the battery down. Something I thought I would share with you that I learned, uh, not in these videos, but other ones. There's a, a, a nut in there and a nut only fits in a certain way. Same thing on positive and negative side. You'll see some white around there. Uh, that's just a little bit of grease that I put on the bottom of it to hold it in that position. So when I go to put the screw in, it will capture it. I won't have to finesse with it. So here we go. Positive first. I can feel it grabbing it. Awesome. All right, gas tank back on, battery back in. Can do a little crank here. Yeah, baby. And uh, let's go ahead and put the seat back on. Uh, not the seat. The muffler goes next. So if you'll remember what we talked about in the beginning, one of the big things that they don't tell you is that it's a struggle to get everything back on, especially if you keep the muffler on. So what we said was, let's take the muffler off. And we learned that the hard way the first time we did this. It just slides right back into the tube, no problem. Everything lines up. It's all good. Two bolts. And we're ready to go. Almost. Click. Muffler on. Let's move on to the next one. So the next piece to put back on here is the reserve tank for the coolant on this bike. Uh, I kept everything attached. Remember I put these uh, plugs in there and I'm trying to, as best I can, not have it drip uh, at all. 
Be aware, it's likely going to drip, but you want to minimize this stuff, especially coolant. It's like, and brake fluid, those are the worst. Alright, let's get that one on. Wow, that was fucking stupid. Probably why it wasn't going on well is because it wasn't seated correctly up here. Oh shit. Typical stuff at the North Phoenix Suburban Stead. Who would know that this would be one of the more challenging pieces? Man, I'm, maybe I'm just getting tired because uh, it's been kind of a long day doing this job. Uh, but spilled a little bit, not a huge amount. Um, cleaned it up. I'm still on the reserve right between the upper and the lower, so we're all good there. Let's, uh, let's put the seat on and then we will fire it up and hopefully she operates correctly and there's no more leaking. And you learned a few things about uh, how to install, how to remove, and how to reinstall a carburetor. So let's go. sure I didn't screw anything up okay let's just I'm gonna do a quick once over make sure I've got everything connected correctly actually I'll do it with you so we've got the carburetor is seated correctly with the boot there and the boot in the back um, so that looks good everything is tight we're not we check for leaking there we've got our drain tubes correctly and on the other side Somewhere behind that mess, we know we connected it electronically, um, so we're good there. Shock absorber is back in. We've got the um, line hooked up, and we know that we hooked up the uh, hot start as well. So let's bring this outside and uh, give it a quick shot. Let's see if, how long she takes to fire up. Our Lady of Blessed Acceleration, don't fail me now. Time circuits on, flux capacitor, fluxing, engine on. 